So for today's training, we're really going to emphasize yoga translations one through four. And like I just said, one through four is um, enough information for you to teach an hour class. So that is my goal. After you do the basic training one day, six hours, that you feel confident and have enough material to teach a basic introductory class. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're always going to walk our feet to the front of the mat, use the circular shape of the mat to inform the movement, so the toes are going to be pointed out, and then the hips are going to drop down and turn under. Just see if you can emphasize it. Turn your pubic bone all the way back. All the way back. Just let it drop. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. And then push your hips forward so you can feel what not to do. <laughs> and then push them all the way back. All the way back. Turn it under. Yeah. Do you feel the depth in your hip flexors now? Hip flexors are deepening. There you go. That's where the tightness is. But we're not contracting or compressing. We're actually elongating, right? Because gravity is holding us. So we're going to go over one more time how we can adjust the swing. I'm going to turn around so you can see me. So when I get in, I'm going to use my forearms to press it down right to the bottom of where the ribs are, below the bra strap. Then I'm going to use the forearm press, or I'm just going to hook. But notice how engaged I am. I'm pulling down strongly against the swing, so I'm holding it there. If I don't, then this happens. That's not too bad, but this gets uncomfortable, and now I'm cutting off circulation to my arms. So as soon as somebody says, what do I do when my arms fall asleep? <laughs> We tell them to take a break or show them how to do a back bend. But we really want to get into that habit of putting the swing nice and low. Nice and low and then hooking. And we're not used to hanging by our underarms. So the first thing we have to do is give people lots of instruction in how it's normal for that to be uncomfortable. It's a sensitive area. We're releasing the lymphatics. It has to, to do an interface with the heart and lungs. And there's a lot of energy points there. That, I've also noticed sometimes because I'm very light, I am way about at the floor, so sometimes I have to lower it because it's probably be a little weight heavier, so this thing stretches more. Sure. So that's a difference that I yeah. that I find when I'm in class. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. So first position is sumo squat. Okay. If you look down, make sure your outline is close enough that it's right there for you. We're going to take notes, but not at this exact moment. So squats, lunges, and back bends. This is the super shorthand version, right? So I want you to be able to know what a sumo squat is. So feet are placed facing forward. They're out 45 degrees. Walk your toes to the front of the mat. Drop your hips a lot. That's sumo squat. Doesn't matter what your arm position is. It matters if it's like a squat. So we're all just going to come up and try to do a squat without the swing. So go ahead and do a squat. Okay. Keep your hips level with your knees. See how deep your hip flexors there are. This is the sumo squat and the swing, okay? It's not this, okay? So really get people to deepen into their hip flexors. And from there, really good guys, we're gonna use the swing to keep the spine long. Notice you have to, if your butt is back, your head is forward, we're gonna start learning the physics of the body and the pivot points. But with the swing, you can stay straight up and down, but it's the same sumo squat, okay? Yeah, so sometimes it's good to feel the yoga translations. I think what I'll do is I'll just walk your, pick your feet up for me. Yeah, just gonna walk that forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I like to get people right underneath their plumb line. I'm a little insane about alignment, but it's just part of the sacred geometrics. <laughs> How do you feel really about knees going beyond the ankles? So always stack the bones. We are calling them yoga translations, right? Mm -hmm. So we keep our yoga postures and we're just, um, we're enhancing them. So if you see somebody like this, it just doesn't look good, right? It just doesn't look good. It's so nice to keep the right angles in the body and you keep everything stacked. Now, some people, it will be more in emphasis, you can walk your feet forward a little bit more, thank you, Sam. It, it'll be more important to emphasize the alignment with them. And you'll see that they don't have the alignment in their body. They don't have the body intelligence turned on and tapped in to move the energy through the system. That's why we stack the bones, so we have maximum length and space and openness and flow, right? Now, if somebody who's a little bit more experienced is like this, but you can see that's just what they're doing in that moment of practicing, that's different. But I'm going to be very diligent about the alignment with you. 
guys for today. Right. It seems like with your body not measuring weight, the knees over the toes is not such a big deal. Exactly. With the weight not not with the weight being supported by the swing. So I say things in positive terms, right? Even though I was going to repeat you. So with the weight supported by the swing, um, the joints are safe. Okay, that's just how I would relanguage that. But it's okay to practice the principles even though we're not holding our weight. You know, it's okay to just <coughs> get used to that, and then it is not that big of a deal. They're not most likely somebody is not going to injure, injure themselves. But let's work on the alignment. Of now, take a break. Whenever you need to take a break, you press straight back. It is a diagonal, so point your head towards the top corner of the room. So you don't collapse back. You see what I mean? Lengthen through the diagonal by pressing into your feet. And then from there, stretch the whole front of the torso. Open up the arms. I like to do a lot of jazz hands. Jazz hands, palms facing the sky. Shake it out, flex the fingers back, that feels really good. And then you can support the neck by coming back into chillaxin arms. Now chillaxin arms is something that we'll do a lot. Now from chillaxin arms, this is our back bend, right? From our supported, supported back bend, try just bending one knee and then kind of let yourself sway to that side and then the other knee. Most of the time I'm gonna have you synchronized swim, but right now I just want you to play and experience the swing. Your head is totally leaning back into your hands. And your heart is pointing up towards the sky. Yeah, so lean back a little bit more into it. There you go. Beautiful. And then I call this sweeping willow where the upper body just kind of flaps in the wind and sways from side to side. So your upper body is just the end of the branch using the momentum. And then the lower body is like the trunk where it's nice and strong and sturdy. And notice just swaying from side to side starts to open up the connective tissue. And what we want to do is work with the fascia. When we open up the fascia, that's the sheath between the skin and the muscle, it's going to release whatever buildup of tension or holding that might be sticky. The body the stickiness is, is usually the issue that um, doesn't necessarily get addressed with people. Does that feel good? Mm -hmm. Really good? Now you'll notice that when you have clothes hitting, the swing hitting clothes, it feels better than the skin, so in time you might just want to put a little bit more on. It's just a comfort thing. Sam usually does pretty well just using shorts instead of pants, but most of the time people will get irritated with the, with the stretch. That is the rolfing, the free rolfing session that they're getting with the swing that people pay me a lot of money to do. But the swing does it in a way that's um, just more consistent and deeper, that could be irritating over time, so we just take breaks. You're a rocker. I do structural integration. Nice. Kind of the same thing. My fascial release, neuromuscular, all that. Deidre's a, a rocker, right? Are you officially rocking? Um, I am an official structural integrator by the Rolf method mm -hmm. from a different school than the Rolfers. Yeah. Uh, the same training. Same training. Beautiful. Cool. Some of my favorite stuff. Yeah, so good. So yeah, so the newest version is called structural integration. So okay, we're going to press back. Let's go ahead and heel to the feet together. There's an infinite number of things we can do with the sequencing, by the way. I'm just going to give you guys a taste of how we can use it. So we open up wide. So whenever we open up the arms, I call it angel wings. You can call it eagle wings, butterfly wings, we have all kinds of wings, winged ones. Okay, and then go ahead and stretch your arms up overhead, come into your fullest expression of a back bend. Now notice here that the neck has to figure out what to do, right? So if you're okay engaging through the whole spine, fantastic, stay there. But most people are going to bend the elbows, clasp the hands behind the head, and let the back bend happen without the neck getting strained. Now I'm pulling the attraction just slightly along the back of the neck, like on the occipital ridge. I'm pulling the skull up and out on that diagonal. So I'm actually creating space for the cervical spine as well as leaning back into it. Can you feel the difference when you do that? So I'm just going to go around and just give you guys, so this is yoga sage, which we learned in the second module. What I would do is just help somebody by coming up and out and then they can feel all the space that happens in the body. And I just want to go ahead and come back into chillaxin arms. And so when I'm working with people, I try to give them as much support as possible to go deeper, 
And notice how much I'm pulling. I'm not trying to take their head off. I'm really just wanting to create a millimeter of space in the spine. And it's really good to just feel. And I'll let them even rest on my belly a little bit, you know, so their head feels supported. And then I'm tractioning up and out. So it's not back, it's out. You know, so we, we beautiful. We're doing that just lovely. So we want to keep the nice long lines of energy as well as create space. And now you're pulling in the same direction. Yeah, there you go. To get the maximum length. Does that feel good? Really nice, guys. So when we learn the second module, we'll learn how to massage in the swing and use the swing to assist us to go deeper because as body workers, those that do that for a living, it's way easier to open up the body using gravity to assist us than to try and push and pull and do all that ourselves. Okay? So from here, we're going to come into our weeping willow again. Keep the chillaxing arms. And notice with your feet together, it's totally different. We're not bending the knees. We're keeping the legs straight, pushing the feet down, toes pointing forward. Feet together if you can. And then from there, leaning back and letting the other body just sway in the space. So whenever we sway, I like to call it swagger. So we're getting swag in our swing. And all the names and sequences are made to be funny and silly and playful. So swagger is um, like a hip-hop term that is like when you walk, you get swag. So you know, um, I, might, yeah, I might actually tell you sometimes where I get <laughs> the names from and other times I'll let you guess. But yeah. It's a hip-hop thing, huh? It's a hip-hop thing. My mind went to the south. It's a Justin Bieber thing. Yeah, there's, yeah, we got swag. So anyhow, we're so cool. That's that's what I was getting at. <laughs> cool kids. I'm using the swing, getting their swag. It's really funny to get see people get it and they just start giggling. They're like, oh my god, saying that. So yeah, so that's swagger. And then we're gonna sit straight down. So notice the first thing we do is we get the um, lat activation and engagement in the upper body. So engage but relax, so the lower body can really just sit. Just let yourself hang here. Wiggle it a little bit. Feel what's happening in the hips. These are all, uh, number one is all the upright positions. Okay, so there's two ways to traction the spine. One is upright, and the other one is upside down. So all the upright positions are for those people that don't quite feel comfortable going upside down yet, or like, oh, I get dizzy, or whatever. How so, about your toes? Because I see your toes are on the ground, mine are not. Yes, well, this is, this is just part of my super flexy body, which right. is, um, not everybody can do that, and it's okay. You can push your feet down to the ground, and then drop your hips from there, and then just wherever you land is fine. Or pull your toes back, flex your feet back, and drop your hips more. And it's okay. It's just length through the front of the shin that will, that will happen in time. Okay? Press your hips up towards the sky, so you have this nice long line of energy. Let's go back into the forearm press. Now, I will incorporate the breath into it, like as a yoga practice, but we're learning something new. There's just a lot, it's like a symphony. There's a lot of pieces, so we will get there, okay? But follow me now, and I will do my best to teach in reverse. It's a little tricky for my brain, but this is, your, this is my left, your, your left, my right, you kind of pick up the left. Okay, so we're just mirroring at each other. We're gonna roll onto the outer edge of the right, flex the foot back, side twist, right? Put the foot down, not by the knee, not by the ankle, but walk it up. There you go, as high as you can. Flex that foot back first. Flex the bottom foot back. So we go the other way for your driving. Go the other way. Oh, that one. It's already confusing for me. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> now this is the pose when we drop. Yes, drop. Okay, drop even more. Okay, twist and drop. Yes. We get the twist first and then the pose is the drop. Okay, so the thing that I'm going to focus on with you guys, like I said, with an excruciating amount of detail is alignment. So get your foot over here for me. Okay? So we have to line it up first. That way we can do the twist around it. Okay? And then we stack the bones, and then you can drop. Go ahead and push straight down. It's okay. So whenever there's tension, then we pause. So you're going to inhale and lift. Inhale and lift. Come out of it. Exhale and drop. So we're so happy that you're here because we learn by people who have challenges, you know? If everybody was perfect, it's like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> so it's okay for us to go slowly. It's okay for us to not be able to go too far. And it's okay to find that edge and play with the edge. 
that we play with that edge with the breath. Okay? So we're going to do it with the, those new understanding of alignment. When we come back, we're going to inhale, put that left knee up towards the sky. Exhale, go ahead and straighten the legs. Let's wash it out. Go ahead and inhale your arms wide. Big breath in, and then exhale, swim up overhead. Overhead, stretch, stretch, stretch. Inhale, open back up. Exhale, come into the forearm breath. Forearm press. You notice how we can use the breath to create the movement? It's inhale, exhale, inhale. So we're swimming. So for those that like water, this is a really, really great practice to really get into that swimming motion. Inhale, pick the right knee up. First, we roll onto the outer edge of the left. Go ahead and step as high as you can. Now, this is the twist, and that feels like enough, right? And our gaze goes back over the opposite shoulder. Opposite shoulder, thank you. So, knee goes over to the left, gaze to the right, then we drop. That's the stretch. Kind of low obliques, right? Much better. So, we just keep doing the practice over and over again until it becomes second nature. But when we first learn how to do the twist, there's a lot of details, right? Knee, foot, head. Okay. So, inhale, come out, just pulse up. And then exhale, drop again. So the only thing that's moving is the position of my hips. Good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, and then drop. Beautiful. Keep the knee up. Come back to the center. So go ahead and pause. So I just usually drop a little bit to pause. And now I'm going to come in and wash it out. So this is our back bend is the kind of vinyasa flow, if you will. Inhale, arms open wide. Exhale, bring them up overhead. And inhale, open, exhale, press, go ahead and just stay there for a breath. Feels like it's happened in the body. Are you guys okay with um, the door open? No. Okay. Yeah. I just thought I heard somebody come in. Sorry. He's like, yes, yes. You <laughs> were playing with excitement. Okay, good. Let's come back to the sumo squat and just feel our hips. So already the hips are changing. Already we can feel the shift. Now what I'm going to do is start the lunging from side to side. So we just did a twist. Now we're going to come into our lunges and twists at the same time. Now I want you to trace the shape of the mat. Feet are a little bit wider. Okay? Now when I turn, it's not linear, right? It's a twist. So let your heel come out on the right. Let's all do the ring one. It's <laughs> okay. Let the knee fall in. There we go. That's the twist. Beautiful, guys. Come back up. And again, I'm giving excruciating detail. The heel come up, come out, and the knee comes down, and then the You feel that in the, in the hip flexor? So we're initiating the movement from the spirals. Beautiful, Sam, that looks great. Does that feel good? So in yoga, we tend to just move linearly, and we lose that, that ability to really spin the joints, which loosens up all of that connective tissue. So I do this all the time, and I can still feel it in my hips. You guys feel your hips? Can you feel the rotation in the hip flexor and all that connective tissue starting to loosen up? So we want to do lots and lots of different variations and poses to help loosen that up. Now I'm going to walk my foot to center. So line it up. So we're not on a tightrope. We line it up with our hips. Does that make sense? You can drop that knee down. Mm -hmm. So make sure your knee is in line with your hips, not a tightrope. Does that make sense? Okay, walk your foot out then. Not on the same track. Yes. So your knees stay in line with your hips. Good. Now we're going to twist with the upper body. Now notice we're using the swing <coughs> to traction against the movement. So look towards the right. Yeah, beautiful, guys. And now we're going to inhale, pick up the knee, come back through center. Let's try the other side. So you can see how things will start to smooth out. Make sure you get the alignment. So we get the alignment, and then we twist. Doesn't that feel amazing through the intercostals and ribs? Now notice the swing is riding up a little bit more, but it's okay. Yeah. We're just pulling down against it. It's okay for this one. Inhale, pick that knee up. Come on back. Let's, from there, just wash it out. Doesn't matter if the feet are wide. You can call this star, right? We have that formation in the body and then back bend. So I let the swing slide down. So let the swing slide down here by leaning back. All right? So if it rode up, then we just get it back down. We just wiggle it down. Really good, guys. Okay. Uh -huh. So go ahead and come forward. We're just going to swing it out from side to side. Now we're going to come to a side lunge. So that was a side lunge twist, right? No, this is just a side lunge. So I walk my feet really wide, especially if you're long, my friends back there. And it's okay if the knee traction's over the, the ankle, but because we're not weight bearing. 
but we still want to keep the posture. So we're pressing back. So walk your feet forward a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So we come to um, the plumb line, the neutral, and then we press back and we shape, and we trace the shape, the semicircular shape of the mat. Now your, your leg loops might get a little excited and pop you. You can always hook them, which means just put them around your arms if they bother you. If they don't bother you, don't worry about it. But sometimes people are like, what do I do with the leg loops? <laughs> it's like, just hold on to it. You can also do the arms, marionette arms, I call them. Okay, again, let's just try to sync up. Let's all go to the right. We'll pause here in a side lunge. Beautiful. And then over to the left. Now, as I'm pulsing, I'm not standing up into it. Right? I'm keeping my hips synced back. But then my arms are engaged. I want you to try the marionette arms. Okay. So your, your, your hips are still behind your feet? That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I'm not all the way up yeah, into it. Yeah. I mean, which we could do. We could pop could up. Be. Let's try yeah. it. Let's pop up into a warrior two, which means I have to sh shift. Let's go to the right if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to shift my foot position so my, my left heel turns out. And I'm holding there. And then we can press down, nice and strong. And then we shift back and then pop up into warrior two on the other side, change your foot position. Everybody here do yoga or at least heard of it? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the, the foot position is the only thing that I would go into more detail for those that haven't done yoga yet to make sure that they're all stacked up. Yeah, so turn your heel out and toes in and the back foot. Yeah. So see how you're not actually on the foot? Walk the foot in a little bit more. Yeah. Press into that outer heel. Yes. Do you feel that engagement? Yes. Yeah. Totally different. Go ahead and come back on Let's just chill. Okay, so whenever we do something exciting, we do something mellow to um, let the body have time to integrate. So one of the things about the hard body boot camp, blah, 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 that for me, um, after time didn't work is the constant contraction in the body without the expansion. So we want to create balance. So now what we're doing is we're going to bend the knee and bring the elbow towards the knee. So I'll go to the right and sink up, and then press back, and then the left knee and the left elbow sway towards the knee. And this is washing out the tension, washing out the spine. Do you guys feel what I'm talking about? Yes. I think I need to do that. So I'm going to have to help you. Yeah. Did you do want to do it? Cool. It's okay to bring the swing up and down, too. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Usually, if it's too high, it, you'll feel it, and it'll start to bug you, and it's okay to bring it lower. Um, if it gets too low, we'll, we'll switch back up. So we're still just on number one, and I want to show you guys um, a couple more things that we can do. There are literally infinite numbers of ways to do twists and lunges and back bends, but we're going to heel toe our feet together. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you for bringing the leg loops down as well as the swing down. It all moves together as one unit, so everybody just pay attention to that. If the swing comes down one, the leg loops come down one. Thank so we're going to heel toe our feet together, drop the hips, use our forearms. Let's go ahead and start with the left knee again. We lift it up. This time we're going to shoot it back. Now I like to land on my toes and then push my right knee forward and come into a forward lunge. And I will drop down onto my back knee, but there's very little weight. Can you guys feel that? Okay, with the toes tucked under, it's a little bit easier to lift. It's okay to let the foot be relaxed too. In yoga, they teach in different ways as well. Toes tucked under works for me. It's really a personal thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press in so much with our forearms that our chest rotates up towards the sky. So we're initiating our back bend from the upper thoracics. So we're getting this. So keep dropping the hips. Keep dropping the hips. Yeah. Tuck your pubic bone under, Annie. The other way. That's up. Tuck it under. Yes, the other way. The way you don't want to go is where you <laughs> And when in doubt, it's the other way. Press that. Yes, towards me. Towards okay. Sam. Sam. <laughs> Thank you. And it's just the hip flexors being tight. It's okay. But as we press our arms in and lift, we're going to feel this amazing stretch through the quad, through the psoas, into the belly, and up through the heart. So that's the line of energy we're focusing on here. Does that feel amazing? <sighs> Beautiful, guys. Okay, press back. So we press back first. Okay. Then take the left hip forward. Pick the right knee up and change sides. So shoot that foot back. Land it on the toes if you can. 
Now press the left knee forward and come on down. Now notice how straight up and down you are as opposed to a normal yoga, yoga lunge. I like to do all kinds of hand mudras. You guys are great. Just do whatever you want. They'll, they'll change all the time, too. This is one of my favorites, right? The double diamond heart. So heaven and earth are reflecting one another. Yeah. Anyhow. So <laughs> we're going to lift up so much that the knee can rise. Tuck your feet right under. So, Annie, it's really important to get the alignment first. I want you to look down at your feet. Uh -huh. I want you to walk your left foot over so it's tracking right, up, right over your hip. Thank you. And then pull your right knee in. Pull it in. Thank you. Does that feel better? Yes. Okay, good. Now you can actually walk that foot back or bring the knee forward, but one or the other. Walk the foot forward. Yes. Yes. Okay, now that's the stretch. Perfect. Okay. You take a nice deep breath there. Yeah. And then press in and lift up. Now, how you're feeling is how most people in a beginner class are going to feel. Like, oh my god, this is a lot of information, and holy shit, this is a gigantic opening in the front of my body, the tightest part yeah. of my body. So we just totally relax into that and be like, it's right. okay, and that's why we take breaks in Trust the swing. Oh, the swing. Trust the swing. Yeah, I know, it'll take <laughs> some time to read. But notice, with, without even the press, this alignment here is huge. Does everybody feel that opening? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now with the back then, now we're initiating the heart opening, and it's just an amazing stretch to the belly. Make sure the neck is happy. You know, if you're crunching in the neck, adjust. And now for anybody who wants to go deeper, you can straighten the front leg, press the hips up towards the sky, and bring your head back towards your heel. That would obviously be the advanced version. Your head is not going to touch. <laughs> Come on back down. Beautiful. Straighten the jaw. Okay. So in between, we're going to wash. Just think about washing it out, neutralize the spine. Come into full extended back bend, and then chillax the arms. So go ahead and support the head, sway it out from side to side, and notice what's happening in the body. So even in the training, when you guys are learning the poses and learning the sequences, you're having a massive opening in the body. Even if you practice tons of yoga, martial arts, meditation, qigong, I don't care what it is, you're going to have a huge shift, a huge transformation in the body. The swing is just powerful like that. No matter what type of level of experience, it's really powerful. Let's come on out. Take a little break. Okay? Everybody doing okay? Okay. Let's review that, and then we're going to go right into number two. So, um, squats, back bends, lunges. Okay, so squats is the number one position that we get the lengthening of the spine out of the pelvis. Okay, they're the upright positions in order to release tension in the lower back. Here we go. Very good, guys. So we do the back bends, obviously, to open up the heart. And we do the lunges to open up the hips. So there are literally an infinite number of back bends, lunges, and squat variations that I can show you guys. There's tons of videos for you guys to watch, but I want you to just learn some basic ones, okay? So the basic ones, from the sumo squat, twist, okay? So circles, twist side to side. So twist, easy. Now side to side is coming into more of the side lunge. And then the circles is doing the semi-circles semi back and forth like this. So in every single one of the poses, we try to do a circle, a twist, and a side to side. And those are all the variations that you could possibly imagine with that combination of those. So the other ones that I like to do from here, from the back bend, is the side twist. Okay. So just review what we've done. So this would be the same as doing a reclined twist on the floor. Mm -hmm. So this is what people do on the floor of pelvis. Right? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with the reclined twist in the swing, we're opening up a whole oblique and side body. This is the love handles, you know, that are really hard to get into. The uh, piriformis, as well as the psoas, the QL, all of this tightness that creates lower back pain is being opened up with the swing in this simple pose, and the idea is to drop into it to get the twist. This is not the pose. 
this is the pose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just pulse in that with people. It's also the same as that one, where you can come up. Good. Yeah. So in yoga, especially if you guys know Shiva Ray, she does a lot of this stuff, which would be the closest thing to really getting the side body open. The mandala from flow stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, then from there we got more into our warrior poses. You know, we're doing that stuff, which is super fun. And then we also got into the weeping willow. So you can do the weeping willow from bent knee, from side to side or legs together. So this would be our, our circles. And I'm going to show you guys, just because it's really fun, and I would only do this if I was with a really playful group, but we can do our side to side, our circles, and then we can get so big that you can actually go all the way around. Yay! Make sure the chandelier is happy. <laughs> but it's really, really fun to get that much play so this is free energy, just so you guys know. The free energy we're looking for is in our own bodies. Because if you just use angular momentum, you can actually just keep swinging effortlessly. And do you prefer we use the leg, leg loops? Well, they're just going to pop you. hold on to the swing. Yeah, if you don't use them, they're just going to eventually, like a pity. I think you sag more when you don't use the arms. You, you do what? I think you sag more when you don't use the leg loops. Well, the whole thing is being engaged but relaxed. So yeah. we definitely want to have enough engagement that we don't set. So yeah. Yeah, they are, they'll, they're just another thing to hold on to you as well, which people really like. All right, great, great guys. So this is how we transition to number two. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a little on here? Well, no, they're, they're, all the names are what you write down. Okay. So that's part, Mikimulo is part of the, the circles in the side to side. So this section, would be five pages long if I wrote out all the names yeah. and the scripts and stuff. So that's your job. That's what I thought. Yeah, but there is a, a, a much larger manual that's 80 pages that you get <laughs> after you turn in your, your homework. Excuse me. And you'll get it's all so of the descriptions. <laughs> so yes, this is just an outline. Okay. Mm -hmm. So things like angel wings and stuff like that, you're going to want to write down. Okay. Right? If the angel wings is like this, then the angel wings is also like this. So we'll write all that stuff down. We'll have plenty of time for that. So from our sumo squat, we're going to go into number two now. So we're here. We just got done doing all of number one. We're teaching a class, right? And then we're going to need a break. So we're going to shift forward into a wide straddle, toes in, heels out. So it's not peppermint patty. Peppermint patty is when you press your hips forward. It is a wide straddle forward fold. So get your hips back over your ankles. Push them back. Hips back. More. If I can keep repeating it, it's probably because there's still more. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to bend the elbow creases. So drop in. So the first thing we do is I try to keep my feet close to the center of the mat. So they're along the, the plumb line. Right? Good. Thank you. Perfect. So go ahead and bring your feet a little bit wider, hun. There you go. Good. You got it. Now let's just shift from side to side. So what we're doing now... So that same circles, twist, side to side, we translate that into all the poses. This is our play. So we're gonna go ahead and let our gaze trace the shape of the mat. So we really wanna get in tune with the difference between the side to side and the semi-circles. So how can we go to side to side and have a circle at the same time? So I'm just gonna pull your hips back up. It's okay, but I just want you to stay here like you're in a wide straddle forward fold and then spin, there you go. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So you're still keeping that alignment. As soon as you pull forward, if you didn't have a swing, you would take you would take a dive, which is not that big of a deal. But we do keep the alignment in the wide straddle forward fold, as if we're in our yoga translations. Okay, the sun is coming to get me, which is so exciting. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and use the extra shark. You guys want a little bit more air? Yeah. <laughs> Sam will put you in 
charge of the wing nuts. <laughs> okay. Somebody besides me gets to be in charge of the wing nuts.
it's not really my jam, but I like to give people the upper body strength to do the flips. So go ahead and straighten that left arm. You're going to grab the swing with your hands. Okay, bring it overhead. There's no X this time. Hold on with both fingertips wrapped around. Drop a lot, and now we bend the elbows a lot. So now let's go ahead and open up the chest. The first thing I do, which you'll probably notice, is like wiggle in all the poses. I just like to pulse and move from side to side. So it's not just linear side to side, it's semicircular side to side. We're really just exploring in the space and pressing into the outer heels to get the stretch through the legs. So when you come to one side, you'll really feel the stretch through the IT band and everything if you really kind of pause there. Let's feel that? That's amazing. Okay, so from center, we're going to do the same similar thing, but this is a tricep curl. So we're going to inhale and press up and straighten the arms, nice and slow and controlled. Some people really want this kind of stuff, you know, so we have to show them how you can use the swing for the strengthening. Exhale, lower down, so we pause at the bottom. Inhale, press, 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 come up. Exhale, drop. Heart opens. Inhale, press. Come to stand. So once we come to stand, we can go ahead and kneel toe or feet together. Wiggle it up. Now I'm going to show you guys why that is so important. For those that have done this with me before, you've definitely seen the superfly. But in order to get the strength to do superfly, we need our arms engaged and not just using our back muscles. Because from here, we have to be able to press ourselves up and extend. Now, if we don't strengthen that underbelly part of the arm, this is going to be very difficult. So when we're on the ground, and we're learning how to gain that strength on the ground, it's easier, right? So we use the ground to leverage our energy in order to be able to lift when we go into some of the acrobatics, okay? So a lot of the things that I do with the swing is actually strengthening the flag, the little flappy part of the arm, the armpits, the underneath, the, through the intercostals, the lats, all, all through the love handles, the parts of the body that even people that work out a lot, they never really hit those kind of secret spots. Okay, so really important to use the swing to start to access those parts of the body. They happen to also interface with the lymphatic system and the, the bundles, the collection of nerves and that kind of thing. So it's incredibly healing for the shoulder girdle to get that under strength. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Okay, so from here, we're going to come into our forward folds. We're now coming into 2B. Okay, we're going to take a break, break of about 20 minutes. So we're going to stretch this down as much as we can. So now the swing is hitting that space where your leg inserts into the pelvis. It's not the belly. It's not the bladder. It's the hip flexors, the bottom of the hip joint. Now go ahead and lean forward and come into a forward fold. Now if your swing is too high, it's okay to bring it down, but your heels are not supposed to touch. You're on the balls of your feet. And what I want you to do is I want you to just sway from side to side a little bit. Clasp your elbows and just hang. Now you're draping your weight forward, okay? So your feet are hip distance apart, and I need you to just drop the upper body. Drop. Just let your body hang. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Beautiful. Now just sway from side to side and let it feel good. That's all we're doing for this pose today. And so we should walk forward into it a little bit, like I did, right? Is that correct? No, you shouldn't, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to correct you guys. <laughs> Trust me. So nothing changes. I'm giving you excruciating details and instructions. So if I didn't tell you to walk forward, it's because you probably shouldn't have walked forward. Okay. But if you, if you do it, most people are going to do it. So then we're going to go over it. I'm just waiting for Sam to come back, and we'll get into it. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful, guys. Okay. So when I'm right underneath my plumb line, my feet are close to the center of the mat. Okay, so walk your feet towards the center of the mat. Mm -hmm. Let your upper body drape down. Feel free to ask any questions. That's a really great question. Where to put the feet? So our feet stay exactly where they are, but our upper body is draping forward. So our head is leaning towards the front of the mat. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So most people are going to be right underneath their feet like they're in a, in a yoga class, and their heels are going to be close to the ground, and that is not the pose. The pose is actually trusting the swing 
to drape your weight all the way forward to get the bend of the hip flexor. Most people are bending at their waist. And the lumbar spine really doesn't like that as much as bending from the larger joint. And now our sit bones are lifting towards the sky like our favorite assistant is adjusting us and pulling us up. And we're energetically pulling the heels down, although they're not going to touch. And the head can get closer to the floor. Okay? So you use the swing to rock from side to side. You're also going to get that free rocking session on the hips. And it's going to massage out the hip flexors. All that tightness, just like the intensity was at the underarms when the swing was hitting there. Now we get to feel the intensity at the hips. And yes, it does get easier. <laughs> it is always sensational, but the congestion can start to release. Now I want you to go ahead and release your arms and reach back for your ankles and hold on to your ankles. Still let your head point down towards the earth. Cool. So feet are hips distance. Beautiful. How does that feel, guys? Now if you can pull your chest towards your knees, great, but not your head. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Keep the head in line with the body. Let the chest come towards the knees and be easy about it. Now, if there's somebody who has difficulty with this, would you encourage them to bend the knees? You can bend the knees, absolutely. The idea is that we're just hanging. So most people will just naturally bend the knees a little bit, and that's okay too. As long as they're happy, you're in the right place, but it is a big stretch. And the, and the long muscles of the back, the back body tend to be really tight on people. So you have to take it nice and slow. All right, from there, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to try to follow along as closely as possible. I, get, I tend to make stuff up. So we're just going to bring our hands to the ground. We're going to walk our feet back. We're going to drop onto our forearms. When we drop onto our forearms, our feet lift. They are not going to go higher than the hips. So just plan on bringing your feet down, bring your feet down and down, bring your feet down, bring your feet down. Thank you. One foot off the ground. If you bring your hips, if you bring your feet higher than your hips, you will slide out of the swing. Your feet are heavy. So this one is called folded leaf or floating leaf, depending on the mood. So forearms on the ground and we're just gently rocking back and forth. So Sam, just play along since people are watching you when we're upside down. Stay with us. Yeah. Oh, oh, rocking, uh, not, not yeah. side to side, back and forth. Yeah, just pull yourself okay. forward and back slightly. <laughs> but I was doing what you said, Ma. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're just gently rocking, like we're pretending like we've never done this before. So when we're learning in the training, we're newbies. We're, learning, we're mastering the basics. Beautiful, guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to inhale, pull myself forward, let the feet land, and press back into a V shape. So this is a down dog. If you're in your down dog, your toes are by the back of the mat, your hands are going to just come forward off the front so you have enough room to stretch out. It's okay to be in like a U shape, but that's not the down <coughs> dog we're going for. We're going for the V. So see if you can lift your hips towards the sky. See if you can let your head stay in line with the body so the heart is pressing back towards your knees. And then your hands, even though... You can try your flying dog so your hands can lift up. We're pressing our hands in like our leg depends on it. So really strong foundation. Okay, we're going to inhale and pull forward and look up. This is called Cat's Meow. Down dog and cat cow back together. We arch and open. Beautiful guys. Exhale, press back and round in. Look towards your navel. That is the meow part. So inhale, cat. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to be a cow, it's only a cat. Exhale, meow. Yeah. <laughs> Inhale, pull forward, arch and open. Exhale, round in. Inhale, pull forward, arch, beautiful. It's so, like a cat dog. Mm -hmm. Well, cats me out. I'm not renaming that one, I'm sorry. They, there's so many dog poses in yoga. I was like, where are my cats? Well, there's no cat poses. Where are my cats? This is my meal. Yeah. So, this is and cat's meow is like cat's meow, like it's it's awesome, right? So that's the cat's meow. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add the leg. We're inhale, pull forward, go ahead and lift the right leg up. Arch, open, exhale, pull the knee towards the nose, round in. Inhale, lift and open. Beautiful. Exhale, go ahead and round and pull the knee to the nose. 
Use your breath to initiate the movement. Inhale, you float. Exhale, squeeze and contract into your core. Beautiful. Inhale and lift. So just hold the leg there. So sometimes we'll come down and do happy dog, but we're just going to lift. So I want you to identify this to be the outside of the swing. So this is the inside of the swing where most people are going to hook their foot. There's no anchor point. So the, your leg has to be wrapped around the swing in order for there to be an anchor point. Do you guys see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, good. Anchor points and learning how to have the holds is very important. So this is our one-legged dog. So we didn't straighten the leg yet. We pull our foot down towards our bum. And it, yeah, in this pose, it's not very important, but in other poses, if you lift up, you're gonna slide out. So we're gonna really keep the alignment when we're learning the training, and then we can play with that in the space with the foot stays in really tight towards the bum. And then we get a big stretch to the back of the left leg. You guys feel that? Mm -hmm. So amazing. Just inhale, pull yourself forward, and then exhale, release the foot down. Coming through happy dog, we're gonna wag it up. So wag your tail, it'll feel really intense. On your hip flexors. This is part of the deal. Just enjoy that sensation. If you soften in your hip flexors, it feels better than when you're contracted there. So oh. just try that. Try softening and notice the the difference. <sighs> Beautiful guys. Inhale, pull forward for pass me out. Inhale, lift the left leg up, arch. Exhale, pull it in, round in, knee the nose. Inhale, lift. Open. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, lift up. Beautiful, guys. Exhale, round in. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Inhale, float. Now we're going to stay here. So remember, the leg goes out. So bring it out wide, and then bend the knee and cook. Yep, so stay long. Yep, good. So let me show you another way, Annie, to teach okay. people. Okay, so bring your foot down. There's going to be a lot of people where this seems like impossible, even with like a karate kick. They're like not being able to get it. So you bring your foot out wide and bend the knee, okay? Now lift the left, lift the right leg up slightly and then go ahead and bring the foot higher. Keep your upper body long. I didn't say to move your upper body. Bring your upper body okay. to the center. Center, yes. <laughs> it doesn't want to go. Bring your other foot back down, bring your right back down. Now typically what happens is if you lift up the, the Straight leg, the opposite leg, it gives you a little bit more space. Okay. Okay? So you guys just practice that another time. Practice that you're on the um, opposite side. Here's a, so hook outside in. And then up, bend knee. Yes. Okay. So I want you to bring your, your foot down. Okay. Put feet down. Walk your arms out a little bit more. I want you to stay long. Don't move your upper body. Okay? So we can find the alignment. There you go. That's some line with your shoulders. Press down strongly. Now pull yourself forward. Okay, straight arms. Arch and look, look up, open. Stay long in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bring the foot up. Nope, just up, up. and out to the side. side. So bend the knee and then lift this other foot. So see how you're twisting in the upper body? Yes. Yeah. Stay aligned. Lift this other foot and okay. then up. And now bring this other foot. Uh -huh. So I want you to try to find that without twerking your body so much. Right. I forgot to mention I'm still in this yeah. too. <laughs> it's okay. But just let's see if we can um, keep the alignment. Because what happens, mm -hmm. so this is what I see all the time in this position. And it is really important that we learn that alignment comes first and then the pose comes after. Okay. Okay? So what I see is people get in really tight like this mm -hmm. and then they can't get it. You have to lengthen out to get the space to hook. If you're all crunched up, you can't, you don't have any room. It's like light, you know? We have to get the length and the space to hook. It's so true, seriously. Other side. Mm -hmm. So you keep twisting your torso. Right. So stay nice and long. So bring it out to the side first. Yep. And then bend the knee and then lift the other foot to get the space. It's out here. Almost. Yeah, it's out here. There okay. you go. Okay. Yeah. It'll happen. I just want you to get the alignment piece and then worry about hooking after that. It's okay, okay to use your, your hand. Mm -hmm. Great. And then bring the foot down after you hook. Right. And then pull the foot towards your bum. Pull the foot towards your bum. That's the inside. Get it on the outside. You want me to go up again? The then I think on that side. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see what yeah, I'm doing. Play with it. So once we have that foot up there, let's do the one like a dog. You guys one like a dog. It is a one-legged like dog. <laughs> okay? So once you get the hamstring.
hamstring stretch, then you can release down and wag it up again. Okay. We're not done with the sequence. Are you, are you done? No, I'm just taking a little break. <laughs> Five minutes. Okay. Right. Yeah, have a break. <laughs> my, my, my face is getting red. I know. Oh, yeah. Too. <laughs> I'm sure. All part of the deal. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um, leave shirts on for the swing, so the swings stay clean. Okay. Weekend. Okay. Thank you. So otherwise, I have to take it home and lash it every time. So that's helpful. Okay. So after wagging your tail, let's come back through center. There's a more advanced sequence that we learn in the um, day three training that I'll teach you guys next time. But just here from the fold, forward fold sequences with the swing of the hips. So we're getting the same thing where retraction of the spine out of the pelvis. It's kind of like a half inversion, right? Just we're using our body weight straight down. So we're just going to play a little bit with coming into plank pose. So plank pose is where our hands are directly underneath our shoulders and our feet do not come higher than the hips. Okay, so keep the feet. Level with the earth or lower, but not higher, because you will start to slide up. Okay? So first we just pull forward and back. Make sure we watch out for our neighbors, you know, pillars and poles and walls and everything else. We have plenty of room in here, but we always make sure. If, if we had a neighbor behind us, we would bring our feet wide, hip distance, so they would fit in like Legos. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So from the chaturanga, we're going to start to pulse knee to elbow. So pull the left knee to the left elbow. Straight back, right knee to right elbow. Okay? So just kind of run this, knee to elbows. Beautiful, guys. Straight arms if you can the whole time. Especially when you pull forward, Sam, straight arms the whole time. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Now we're going to try to leapfrog, which is crow pose in yoga. We're going to try both knees to both elbows and hold. It's going to be impossible because our momentum is going to pull us back. But just try it. It's really fun to do the leapfrog. Nice, guys. Okay, we come back to our plank, and we're going to just try push-ups, just gentle, tiny little mini push-ups of bending the elbows, so we can do slightly out to the side for our push-ups here. If we were going to do our true chaturangas, our elbows would pull in towards our rib cage. So those are really easy, right? The easiest push-ups ever. We love these ones. Okay, so from these push-ups, we're going to learn how to come into our upside-down dog. So we bend both knees, feet out, not in, out. Bend both knees, hook your feet. Sam, pull your feet down towards your bum. Pull your feet down towards your bum, Sam. More. More. That's all right. Just pull it in tight. Okay. So if, so if we pull our feet up towards the sky, we're losing our anchor. So this is very important because people all of a sudden their feet will start to float. So pull your feet in tight and make sure that we keep our nice strong foundation. Now when we do our push-ups, they're a little harder, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how we increase the strength in our chaturangas. Now go ahead and press back with straight arms into the upside down dog. So this is the, the full upside down dog. Position, turn our crown and our dog upside down. Super fun. Okay, chest is pressing down towards the ground. And then if we from there we pull forward, we're gonna walk our hands back towards the center of the mat. And then this is gonna be our handstand push-up. So from here, when we bend, when we press straight down, they're gonna be the hardest. Right? So that's how we can do handstand push-ups. So just try it. Those ones are harder, right? <laughs> And then after that, we're going to take a break. So we're going to practice our headstand. This is going to be our only inversion that we learn in this particular sequence. Drop down onto your forearms. Go ahead and let your head rest. Interlace your fingers. Let your head rest at the top of the crown of the head in that little spot. And then you can either just let the feet be relaxed, or you can actually pull the knees together, release the feet, and let the knees pull down towards the chest, just as long as you're Knees are pulling down towards the red mat. You have your anchor. Okay, did you guys feel that? Mm hmm Okay, good. Everybody's looking great. Thank you, guys. So this is our restful, our restorative headstand, right? We could stay here for five minutes if we wanted and really get the benefits of headstand without straining the neck or shoulders. Now, I usually press the top of my head into the earth. There's just this little connection that can happen to the magnetic field of the earth to the pineal gland, the 
that starts to open and activate the master cell, which is part of the DNA. So can you stay in the top of your head? Or just push the top of the head into the ground as much as you can. It doesn't have to happen, but it's just a nice way to get the benefits of the head scan. And so the stuff we'll learn in module three about working with the peel. But yes, just feel that connection to the crown of the head. And it's okay if you relax too, but if you want to engage that plea engagement, Feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. So from here, we pretend like we stayed for five or ten minutes, <laughs> and then what we're going to do to come out of it is we release the clasp of our hands, which is on our forearms. We extend our legs towards the ground, and feet are hooked to go ahead and unhook them. Lengthen the legs, straighten the legs, let the feet be heavy. And if your feet come down, your head comes up. And just play with that leverage or that pivot point in the hips. Feet come down, head comes up. And we just play in that space of where is the most comfortable position for the hips. And then we're going to straighten the arms, land it back in a down dog, sway it out from side to side. Happy dog. Right? So nice, easy, smooth transition from a headstand to integrate the power of that pose. And then we're going to come up to angel wings. So this is what happens. It's okay if we accidentally hug each other on the way too. So we inhale, we look forward, we start to walk forward. You're going to stay on a diagonal, keep walking forward. So come up, so come up through wings. Stay on the mat. There you go. So that's angel wings. This is where our whole body is engaged, and then we hold on to the swing and press back to come out. Really good. So that's how we come out using the pendulum swing. Now some people just come straight out, you know, to stand up, and that's okay too. But if we can use the pendulum to come in and out, then we're keeping tension on the swing and it's holding us in all the way. Okay. Really nice, guys. So that's just one and two. And so we're going to go over three and four after our break.